We will build a neural network in PyTorch consisting of four layers that takes in a handwritten digit and tells us which digit it is. We will use the MNIST handwritten digits dataset which contains 60,000 images for training and 10,000 images for testing our model. And it works pretty well. PyTorch is an open source machine learning library developed by Facebook's AI Research Lab. It provides a flexible, intuitive framework for building and training deep learning models. PyTorch is known for its dynamic computational graph, efficient memory usage and a very beginner-friendly Pythonic API. I will use a Jupyter Notebook inside a virtual environment. We first create a new environment with python 3 minus m vn vn and activate it with source vn bin activate. We run pip3 install jupyter torch torch vision numpy matplotlib to install all the necessary dependencies for our project. With jupyter notebook we start jupyter and with new python 3 we create a new notebook. First, I add all the necessary imports at the top of the notebook, so I don't need to scroll around much during the video. The images we'll work with have a size of 28 by 28 pixels and are grayscale, meaning the pixel values range from 0 for black up to 255 for white. To ensure our network learns efficiently, we aim to have normalized values though, ranging from 0 to 1. So we will need to do a little bit of pre-processing as well. First, we need to download the dataset. Fortunately, it is a very common dataset to train on, so there are helper methods available for downloading it. We use Torch Vision to download the dataset. Fortunately, Torch Vision also provides us with a pre-processing API. We create a transform function consisting of two transforms. First, we transform the image data into tensors and then we normalize it to be between 0 and 1. Actually, we input a mean of 0.5 and a standard deviation of 0.5, but this is close enough. Next, we download the dataset by calling datasets MNIST, specifying where the data should be stored and how it should be transformed. For the training set, we set train to true. For the test set, we set it to false. To access the dataset efficiently, PyTorch offers a concept called data loader. We create two data loader instances here, one for the training set and one for the test set. The batch size is identical, but we only shuffle the training set. That's it, let's run it. As we can see, the data has been downloaded. Let's briefly examine the dataset. Our training set has 60,000 images and there are 10,000 images in the test set. Each image is 28 by 28 pixels. Let's see how they look like. I use matplotlib to show the first 10 images of the training set here. Exactly what we want, 10 handwritten numbers with the strongest pixel values being the digit itself. Let's create a simple feed-forward network with 784 input neurons, a hidden layer with 128 neurons, another hidden layer with 64 neurons and an output layer with 10 neurons, one output neuron for each possible digit. The input and hidden layers will use the reload activation function to communicate their activation to the next layer. And the output uses softmax to turn the neuron activation into a probability. This way we get the probability of which digit is seen in the input image ranging from 0 to 1. I use a subclass of NN module to define the neural network. There are other ways in PyTorch to define the same neural net, but I stick with this one because it is widely used and offers a lot of flexibility when you venture on to more complex networks. First, we define the layers. The input layer takes 28 times 28, so 784 input values and outputs 128 activation values. The first hidden layer has 128 input neurons and communicates 64 activation values. And the output layer takes these 64 activations and turns them into 10. Each NN module needs a forward function which turns the input to the network into its output. We receive the input as x. 
This is a two-dimensional array of size 28 by 28. The first step is to flatten this two-dimensional matrix to a vector of length 784. This is the input to our input layer. The neuron activations of this layer are then fed into the reload activation function, generating 128 input values for the next layer. We feed these into the hidden layer and the 64 activations from this layer are then passed into the activation function, getting the input for our last layer, which itself reduce the number of activations to 10. Lastly, we feed these 10 activations into softmax to turn them into probabilities. Precisely, we are using the logarithm of the softmax, but more on that later. Now it's time to train our model on the training set. Training means we are feeding the entire training set, so 60,000 images and their respective correct labels a couple of times into the network, comparing if the result of the network is actually correct. Every time something goes wrong, we calculate which neurons make a bad decision and tweak them a little. If everything works, over time our network should get better and learn to recognize the digits. This training algorithm is called backpropagation and there are different implementations. Explaining the math behind it goes beyond the scope of this video, but there are a lot of really good resources out there if you want to know more. To know if our neural network performs the task correctly, we need a definition of what correct means. That's what a loss function is for. For a classification task like ours, the negative log likelihood loss function is great. To give you an intuition of what is happening, imagine the following. Given the number 3, our model spits out these probabilities. As we can see, the model is only 40% sure that the digit is a 3. That needs to be corrected. Our loss function should spit out a high value to indicate something is wrong and a low value if everything is fine. We take the 0.4 and calculate the logarithm of it. This gives us a minus 0.92. If it would be more sure, like 90%, we would get minus 0.1. And if it wasn't sure at all with 1%, this will yield minus 4.6. So to get a high value for every wrong prediction, all we have to do is to negate the lock. And voila, we get a high loss value for wrong predictions. Keep in mind though that the loss function is really dependent on the task you're trying to perform. So you basically cannot simply copy this code to make a prediction on crypto prices. We first instantiate a loss function. For negative log likelihood loss, we use NLL loss, which is optimized for working with log probabilities, exactly what our output layer produces by using log of softmax instead of softmax. Then we get ourselves an optimizer. Adam is one of the implementations of backpropagation. We input our model and a learning rate, which essentially controls how quickly the weights of the models are adjusted. Adjusting these too quickly can cause our model to spiral out of control during training. Next, we loop over the entire training set five times. First, we reset the gradients. Gradients are used to determine how and which weights should be adjusted. Each time we process a new batch, we start with zero gradients. Then we use our model to make predictions. Afterward, we calculate the loss using our loss function. With loss backward, we calculate all the gradients for all the neurons in our network based on the calculated loss and with optimizer step, we apply these gradients to adjust the weights. Let's train our model. This didn't take very long. Let's see how we are doing. Let's start with one digit. For that, I'll use a function I found in a Medium article I link in the description below. This function takes the image of the digit and the probabilities output by the model. We use matplotlib to display the image and the probabilities side by side. First, we show the image. Next, we draw a bar chart of all the probabilities for each digit. To call it, we are retrieving one image from our test set and inputting it into our model. Because PyTorch is designed to accumulate gradients during training, we can use no grad to temporarily disable this behavior when we are just making predictions. The output from our model is the logarithm of the probabilities. To convert these back into probabilities between 0 and 1, we exponentiate them. 
Now we can pass the image and the resulting probabilities to our view classify function. Here's what it looks like. Our model is quite confident that this is a 7. Good job! Now it's time to evaluate the whole test set. To do this, we iterate over all images and labels in our test set, obtaining a prediction for every image. To compare the results, we need to find the category index with the highest probability. We then accumulate the total number of images tested and the correct predictions. Wow, 96.6% accuracy, that is actually pretty decent for only 5 epochs. If you want to know about the inner workings of neural networks and how to predict your favorite whiskey with them, this video tells you all about it. Until then, have a lot of fun, coders!